Have you ever looked at someone else's redstone machine and said, what the heck is happening here? Well, today, all of that changes because I'm going to be teaching you everything I know about redstone circuits. Every big redstone machine is compiled of a bunch of small redstone circuits. And in this series, I'm going to be going over every single category of redstone circuits so you can start to understand redstone a little bit better and start even designing your own big machines like the one right behind me. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna start out with the absolute bare bones basics of redstone with the transmission circuits. So as you know, to send a signal from one place to another, we use redstone dust like so. But if we want, the, want to send the signal upwards, we can have the redstone gut dust to go up a block like so. And we can reconfigure these blocks to go up like this. However, redstone dust does have a signal strength limit of 15. So if you want to use a repeater, you can to continue to send that signal, but that can get a little janky with, you have to have a flat surface for the repeater to read the signal and then repeat it. And that could get especially janky in this spiral design. So you can consider using a torch tower, which essentially will depower and power every torch in the line by powering the block that it's sat on, which allows you to toggle the top torch by flicking the bottom torch. Very simple, very easy to understand. We have its downward counterpart, which takes up one more block of space, but it's very effective and essentially does the same thing except utilizing redstone dust instead to send the signal downwards instead of upwards. So these are very relatively inexpensive designs to send signals up and down, but if you have a little bit of glass on hand, and don't have very far to go, you can use a glass, what do you call this, spiral? A compact spiral? <laughs> this does have a signal strength limit of 15 as well. So if you need to go more than 15 blocks, then consider using one of these designs. And it also cannot send the signals downwards. Let's turn this off to, for easy seeing, just like that. You can't send the signals downwards through glass. So this is a, I hardly ever use this, but it's good to know that you can do this through glass. If you're a bit late in your survival game, consider using an observer tower, which can be configured to send signals upward and downward. One difference about this design that we haven't run into yet is that its output is only a pulse of redstone as opposed to a sustained signal of redstone. This can be an advantage or if you need a sustained signal, you can always use a copper bulb and a comparator to get that sustained output. This can also be simplified by putting in different components in between all of the observers. In this circumstance, I have redstone dust. The observers are still able to detect the change in the redstone dust because it powers and depowers. And this observer says, hey, I see that, and then all the way up. And same thing going down, you could use redstone dust as well going down or any, basically any other redstone component. So in this case, I have a note block, I have lamps and I have redstone dust and you can put in anything you want, dispensers and anything that changes with the redstone pulse. All right, next in line is our classic sticky piston slime block, redstone block elevator, essentially each piston pushes a series of sticky, each sticky piston pushes a series of slime blocks attached to a redstone block, which pushes that redstone block into the next piston, which carries it as high as you want to go. So very easy, very reliable. And we have its downward counterpart as well. We can always just send that signal into a block, which powers the, the sticky piston. You don't want to have it be going straight into the piston because of quasi-connectivity, which we won't go over right now, but basically in Java Edition, sticky pistons and redstone blocks work in a very, very particular way. So you want to watch out for that. In the more unconventional side, we have our bubble column elevator. Essentially, when you have a column of water, you can put a soul sand block a magma block will also work in the situation, but I, for this example, I have a soul sand block. 
this soul sign block will change all of this above water to a bubble column. And that observer up there is able to detect that change. So if you didn't already know, when the soul sign is underneath a column of water source blocks, it will send bubbles up through, which will allow things to travel upwards super fast. Magma is the reverse, it will drag things downwards. But that observer is able to say, hey, this, there's bubbles in this water now, and output the, you know, I, I noticed a change, so output redstone. I usually shy away from this design because I don't like using water in my redstone because it washes it away, but if you need to send a signal really high up, a lot of blocks, consider using this design because it is the only design in my list that does not slow down with height. It will be the same duration no matter how tall it is. All of these designs will slow down the taller they get. So obviously in this example, the more observers you have, the longer it's gonna to take to reach the top. So you might need an instant, you might need to get, go all the way from the bottom of the world all the way to the top, you could use this one, it'd be the same duration. All right, moving on to the scaffolding elevator. So the, basically the way this works is right now, if I were to break this scaffolding block, nothing would happen. But if this trap door is flipped down, if I were to break this now, all of these would break. So they are in a different state right now than, right, than they otherwise would be. So that observer is able to detect that change. And you're, it's very reliable. Very easy to understand. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, in my redstone builds, I usually de default to the redstone torch tower, like so, because it's easy to understand and it's cheap to build. But recently, I had a use case where I wanted to activate the elevator from any elevation. So I was in the basement of my base. I wanted to activate it. If I was on the first story of my base, I wanted to activate it. So I used this design, which, which alternates between observer and note blocks all the way down, because if you retune a note block, this observer is able to detect that and send the signal all the way up. And you're able to retune any of these note blocks, which sends the signal from that point upwards or downwards, depending on which way your observers face. So as you can see, there's a lot of customizability in these designs. So whatever fits your needs and resources you have in hand, feel free to implement these accordingly. So that covers a little bit of vertical transmission. Now let's move on to some horizontal transmission. Obviously we have redstone dust, but it has a 15 block limitation. So we use the repeater to repeat the signal to make it go farther. But the repeater has two predominant limitations. First of all, it can only repeat going one direction. So if you wanna send a signal going backwards in that same line, you can't use a repeater. The second limitation is its built-in delay. Obviously, that can be customized to be more and more slow, but by default, it has one tick of delay. So we'll be addressing both of these limitations with the following designs. So if we wanted to send a signal backwards, let's start here. If we wanted to send a signal backwards, we might consider doing this. So we want us to take this signal and move it into this repeater and then send it back into the line to go back to, to the source. So this is what I tried to do when I first wanted to repeat a signal. But little did I know when I send a signal in and the button turned off, the whole line stayed active. But that's because this repeater is powering this, which is going to this repeater, which is powering this way, and then around and around it goes into an infinite loop of power. <laughs> so in order to avoid that, we use what's known as a two-way repeater circuit. Starting off with this really simple design where you send the signal in through this way, which powers this sticky piston, which moves this redstone block to power this way. Because of the way that redstone configures itself, it does not power this block, which would send the signal backwards and reverse an infinite loop. But because the redstone dust configures itself towards the redstone block and not towards the smooth stone in this case, it can loop around. Well, it doesn't loop around, that's the whole point. It does not loop around and you're able to send the signal going both ways. And it turns off after the signal is turned off. Here's another simple design. If 
you don't have pistons on hand or slime on hand, you could use a couple of repeaters. Essentially, when you activate it, the signal goes into this repeater, which powers this block, which does two, th two things. It goes this way and onward to your circuit. And also, this repeater takes that signal out of this block and locks this repeater, which when going this way, sends the signal to the other way. But when going from this way to this way, does not allow the signal to circle back. So because this repeater is here locking this repeater, the signal is not allowed to loop back. And same thing the other way. We have this repeater locking that one. Uh, we'll just simulate that real quick. Yep, here we go. That's locking that way, disallowing the looping of the signal. All right, one more very simple and cheaper design with redstone torches. Here is the design from the top. I won't bore you with explaining this one, but it works similarly to the locking repeater design. All right, so now that we've addressed the two-way limitation of the redstone repeater, let's address the delay limitation of the redstone repeater. So you might want to send a signal really far out, and you might have a bunch of repeaters. Pretend these are this is lots of redstone dust, and you're sending a signal really, really far. You have lots of repeaters in line. And those repeaters delay starts to add up over time, as you can see. There's quite a there's about a second delay, I'd say, between when I push the button and when the lamp lights up. So that's why we have zero tick repeaters. So one disclaimer about this is that it is kind of utilizing a glitch in the game, which is known as quasi-connectivity, which I won't go over now, but because of the way that redstone blocks behave with sticky pistons, this piston thinks it's being powered right now by this redstone block, but it's really not, and everyone knows it. But Java players understand the uh, usefulness and sometimes frustration of quasi-connectivity. So I won't dive into how this works right now, but as you can see, we have three modules lined up of this uh, zero tick repeater. And as soon as I flick this lever, you'll see the lamp light up there in the distance. And you can see every module working at the exact same time because it's there's zero delay in this design. So if you need to send a signal a long way and you want zero delay at all, use this design. Two sticky pistons, two blocks, one redstone block, and of course your wire to send it in and out. All right, that should do it for transmission circuits, creative ways to send signals up and down and side to side. And in the future, we'll go over timer components and signal lengtheners and bobificators and all of the different varieties of redstone circuits. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.